Please welcome to the stage with hearty applause, Mr. Matthew Dix. My parents were the opposite of helicopter parents. They were the Hubble Space Telescope of parents. <laughs> Perpetually positioned as far away as possible and always looking in the opposite direction. <laughs> and so I spent much of my childhood trying to get attention from my parents and other people. When I was little, I became a daredevil. I tried to place myself in the most dangerous position possible. I once rode my bike off the barn roof just to get my mother to look at me. When I was in middle school, I trained myself to read books upside down, thinking that this would be a superpower that my parents and my friends would be impressed with. And in junior high, I was the first boy to have chest hair. So I started wearing button-down shirts that I would button just to the navel so they could see my burgeoning manliness. None of these things worked. But they all paled in comparison to what I did my freshman year of high school at Blackstone Millville Regional Junior Senior High School. Our school had a long and storied tradition of hazing that went something like this. Seniors humiliated freshmen for two months. If you survived and you put up with it, at the end of two months, there would be a dance, the freshman senior get acquainted dance. And after that, everything would be fine and you would be embraced. I saw my opportunity to get attention. On the third day of school, I was walking through the cafeteria and a table of senior boys called me over and told me I needed to bring their tray up to the kitchen. And I said no and kept walking. So this boy named Dan, who was actually a man, because he was like two heads taller than me and had a mustache, he came up and he shoved his tray into my arms. And I dropped my hands and the tray dropped between us. And an ice cream scoop of mashed potatoes landed on his foot. In the movie version of this, the entire cafeteria goes silent and everyone looks at us. In the real life version, no one pays any attention and Dan punches me in the stomach as hard as he can. It was on. Now, I had seen The Karate Kid the summer before, and I saw how Daniel son took on Johnny and those Cobra Kai and ended up with a lid of a shoe as a result. And I decided I was going to be The Karate Kid of Blackstone Millville High School. Now, I didn't have Mr. Miyagi, and I didn't know how to do karate, so I was going to embrace what I did best. I became the karate kid of pamphletry. I stood in front of my school in the morning, and I would hand out flyers to kids as they were walking up the steps. The flyers said things like, seniors are wimps. The class of 85 sucks. And they would take my pamphlets and they'd walk up and they'd look at it and when they realized what it was, they would like throw it away knowing how radioactive it was. And it was radioactive because the seniors made me pay. I was kicked in the groin so often that I actually started wearing a cup to school every day. The seniors brought in signs that they would hang off your neck and they would say things like class of 85 rules and seniors are the best. And I took my sign with pride and went into first period and then I flipped it over and on the back I wrote seniors suck. And I left the class at the bell and walked down to second period proudly displaying my sign and I got paid back big time. Close to the end of October, I decided to step up my pamphletry. So rather than handing it out at the door, I started plastering the school with my signs. I put them on bulletin boards, on the mirrors, in the bathrooms. I would put them right on the seniors' lockers. I got called into Mr. Power's office, the vice principal, and I was told that I was suspended for three days for inciting riot upon myself. <laughs> on the phone with my mother, he told my mother that he could no longer guarantee my safety. <laughs> now, the real reason for the suspension was he did not want me to go to that dance because he was afraid I was going to get hurt and I was going to get hurt. But I wasn't gonna be the kid who was too afraid to go. And so on the night of the dance, I was leaving my house to go to that dance and my mother stopped me and said, where are you going? And I said, I'm going to the dance, I'm gonna to try to get in. And she said, why is this so important to you? My mother asked me a question. <laughs> and so I sat at the dining room table and I told her what had happened over the past two months. And she listened to me. 
And like for this brief moment, it was like the telescope had rotated and it wasn't looking at the stars anymore. And it was looking down at me. And when I finished my story, she told me, I'm taking you to the dance. I couldn't believe it. Now, I didn't get in the dance that night. My mother stood at that cafeteria door and she yelled at those teachers, but she couldn't get me in. And that was the last time my mother ever went to my school except for my graduation. I tried to get my mother's attention in a million ways. And in the end, the night my mother chose to show me attention was the night she tried to get me into a dance where a large group of people <laughs> were going to kick the shit out of me. And it really would have been nice to have parents who had gone to my Little League games. And it would have been nice to have them bring me to Boy Scouts and go to my concerts and pay attention. But if my mom had to choose one night to be with me in some strange and bizarre way, she had found the perfect night to stand by my side and fight for me when no one else would. Thank you. That's Matthew Dix.